Okay, Sheila, you're you're one of our our new members, right? I am. Yes, all of two weeks old. All of two weeks old. Yes, and as we were discussing before this recording started, you had a very serious automobile accident f five and a half years ago. Yeah, February twenty thirteen. Yeah. Okay, and. You had a remarkable experience, which is, although you didn't know about Unseen Therapist at the time, at least by that name, the story is fascinating because you were actually using Unseen Therapists, and your accident was so severe that the, uh, the doctors had you laying still. They told you not even to, to minimize the movement of your eyeballs right because the damage to your spine the damage to your back was so severe they had to operate and you had to be perfectly still for 10 hours it was 10 hours yes <laughs> but when they were checking me over there must have been something that alerted them because they then said look please try not to move we're going to put you into a brace and that was the first inclination that I had that there was anything all that far wrong. Mm -hmm. When I got to the, the emergency department, it was a series of x-rays and CT scans, etc. And when I came out of that, that was when the doctor said and told me that I could anticipate a, a loss of bladder control, bowel control, um, there were bone fragments visible and they would have to operate to remove those. And I was to keep as still as possible and they would be bringing down what they termed the spinal smart bed to transfer me into. Apparently they didn't want you to move your muscles. No, I was to keep still and this, this did, it literally cocooned you so that you, you couldn't move. They, they put some kind of pump things onto my legs to, to keep the circulation going. So I was aware of the, like a bellows going constantly. Mm -hmm. and, um, that was it. I, the, they came and said, try not to, to okay. move my, my eyes to try and stare straight ahead if at all possible or close my eyes, but to minimize any eye movement as far as I could. And that was it. It was like, okay, <laughs> um, what do you do with it? So you're there. You're there for 10 hours. The doctors are telling you, even though you're in, not in any pain at the moment, they're telling you through all their scans and everything else, you got a serious problem and we have to operate. And and you can't, don't even move your eyeballs. <laughs> so there you are. And if I recall our previous conversation, you had like 10 hours in this state. And they told you, you know, don't move and, and focus on like a spot on the wall or something like that. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So now we get into the interesting part. Because what you did... Because you got 10 hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I never stayed still. I say it again, please. I was saying the longest I have ever stayed still, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get that. Okay. But with that, you then, this is my term now, shift into a... I'm going to call it new reality, you know, a, a, a new state of some kind. Okay. So you're saying to yourself, and I'll, I'll have you verify this in a minute. I just want to get the essence of it out. You're saying to yourself, I don't know if I'm going to buy this. I don't need a, I don't know if I want to have this operation. Um, yes, there are splinters and whatever, you know, that broke off in my spine. There is a, Compressed vertebrae, which we hadn't talked about, but it was like almost 50% compressed. Um, and yes, the doctors were quite convinced, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't want to buy it. So you did what you weren't calling prayer at the moment, but which 
I think it was prayer, you were calling on a power within. Use your yeah. words. Would you? Yeah, I, I think the very outset, after being told all this, and especially after being told that, you know, I couldn't have anything to drink, I couldn't even wash my mouth out, I had to stare at this spot, and that's when I thought, well, I won't say what I thought, it wouldn't be very polite. But as soon as I felt that bit calmer, that's when I thought, no, I refuse to think these thoughts. I am not going to buy into being um, paralyzed. Or, they didn't say paralyzed, but they thought a loss of bowel control, bladder control. And I really hope I'm not going to have any kind of operation. I just am not going to think those thoughts was how I was putting it. Um, but if I wasn't going to think those thoughts, I had to come up with some other pretty powerful thoughts to keep my mind away from those ones. Mm -hmm. And that's when I, I just kept repeating to myself that we have this ability. There is uh, something we can connect with or to that allows us to heal our bodies. Yes. Yes. And, and, and let me interject for a second. Okay. Yeah. At this point, the unseen therapist had not come onto the scene by that name. At this point, you weren't being religious and praying to God. But at this point, you were also, but correct me if I'm wrong, you are recognizing there's a power within you, which, by the way, is the unseen therapist. Okay. Yeah. There's a power within you that can heal all of this. Um, but in order to do this, you're going to have to set aside your ego and your beliefs and you know, all, that, all that conventional stuff, surrender to this power, and let it work. Now, those aren't words you used here a moment ago, but... No, put it, what, put it in your words. That is very much what I would be doing. It's like this is way, way too big. <laughs> you know, wait a minute. But I do believe I, I can be well. I can be better. But I have not got a clue how to do it. So, you know, over to you. Yes. And this phrase you used, over to you, is a form of surrender. But it's interesting. We can say the words over to you and they are just words unless we truly mean them give me your sense that it's been a while i know but there you are you got nothing else to do okay. yeah. <laughs> so but did you mean it over to you i mean I, talk I, about that when i when i use the phrase i think i'm recognizing this is not something that i in my brain can fix uh, the connection needs to be some other way. Um, and if it's my brain, then it's not going to happen. Okay. I, I'm not, maybe not explaining that well, but I was aware. It, it, as you say, you have to get out of the way. And we get a super result, which was <laughs> basically they came in the next morning, the doctors, nurses, whatever. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but they basically said, as you sat up, <laughs> um, we don't think you have to have an operation. We don't think you have to do anything. You get up and walk out of the hospital. You've never had a problem since. Did I say no, it right? There would have been a, a day between it. They, they came back after doing the x-rays in preparation to operate. And it was after that they came and said they didn't believe they needed to operate. And we didn't believe that I would need a back brace. They didn't give me any explanation because they'd been adamant the day before all that had to happen. There was no explanation from them as to why things had changed. Okay. I uh, assume the evidence on the x-rays or the, the, yeah. the scans. Uh, well, that's what I'm presuming too. So yeah. what happens is they're convinced with x-rays before you're doing all of this. Yeah. Then after all of this, more x-rays, and they go, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Or not, maybe not, not. I mean, they... No, no. Um, no. 
uh, it was a definite not. And they, they said that the physiotherapist would come and visit me on the Saturday morning and they just left it at that. And it was with the physiotherapist uh, where I sat up, then stood up, then walked. And because I was able to do that on the Saturday, I was discharged on the, the Sunday. And I walked out. I, I wasn't in a wheelchair. I, I walked. And it was quite a long you, walk. You walked like a half a mile or something to your car. Parking's yeah. terrible in the Aberdeen Hospital. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Sheila, <clears throat> very nice. Very nice. Thank you.